what is CQRS and how can we implement it? All right, welcome to the Hello World Show. I am Spencer Schneidenbach. I'm Heather Downey. And today we have Jimmy Bogard. Um, the Jimmy Bogard. Right. <laughs> He is uh, the chief architect of Headspring, been developing software for nearly 20 years, and uh, has one of the most popular libraries on NuGet, top 10, in fact, AutoMapper. That's right. Actually, it's the most popular open source project not developed by Microsoft that's not adjacent-oriented, <laughs> not validation, not unit testing in the Northwest Hemisphere. And you're not going to just one. randomly pull it from NuGet, right? <laughs> right. I just have to like ask left that pad? question. Like oh. uh, we should no, have well I'm, I'm thinking about implementing microtransactions, so <laughs> give you a heads up now. Well, it's great to have you. Yeah, glad to be here. Right. Jimmy, what are you going to teach us today? Uh, today I'm going to be talking about CQRS with Mediator, which is my open source project. Ooh, that sounds really complicated, is it? Uh, no, it's 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 a, unfortunately a complicated acronym for a very simple concept, so hopefully uh, I can take some complicated stuff and try to make it simpler with uh, my project. Yes. Sound good? Okay, so uh, CQRS is a long acronym that stands for uh, Command Query Responsibility Ability <laughs> Segregation. Uh, okay. That's as good as my handwriting gets, so it's, so it's just going to go downhill from here. So the idea here is that uh, when we're building our applications, um, a lot of times we try to build systems uh, that try to layer a lot of different things together. So for example, you may have heard of the repository pattern, which is a way for us to abstract uh, our calls to the database. And so in a typical ap application, we'll have both reads and writes going into this one object, our repository. So I'll have uh, a read coming in, doing something with my repository, and then I'll have a write coming in, going into the same exact object. What we typically find is that in our in most systems, the differences between reads and writes are pretty stark. Uh, when you're doing a read in an application, uh, you're not doing any really validation or things like that or any business logic. It's literally just getting information out of a system and displaying it to the end user. So, uh, to, and most of the time, uh, the reads have uh, uh, like 80 to 90 percent of a request of a system as well. But on the write side, that's where things start to get more complicated. You're looking at having to validate the user's request. You're looking at doing some kind of mutation in the back end, a lot of business logic. So we typically find that trying to make one thing, this, do both of these concerns is too complicated. It just does too many things. And trying to satisfy both kinds of requests with one single object is just too much stuff to do. So what people start to do is split their objects into two completely separate paths. One for reads and one for writes. So write goes to one kind of object, and read goes to a separate kind of object, like this. <clears throat> now, if you start to build more and more of these kinds of systems, you start to find some patterns of usage behind these kinds of objects and these kinds of objects. And in fact, you start to build up even more uh, complicated logic. So you say, well, I'm going to validate or authorize or things before I do this. And this one, you maybe have caching and things like that on that end. So, where Mediator comes into play is for these kinds of requests coming in, there's typically a unique way of uh, uh, denoting that kind of request, like get product details or uh, list customers. Um, each of those individual requests represents an individual ask from a user and an in a, a distinct set of results coming back. So what Mediator tries to do is capture those as concepts. So my requests for information become a get customer details as a request object. And on the way out, I might have some kind of like list of customer details on the way back out. So Mediator tries to tie these two pieces together into a single request. And so this, this class, which represents a request, will implement an interface that says, I'm a request for this kind of result. And the final piece is something to handle that request. And so that's a, another class that implements I request handler of this. And that's what this class becomes. So my application becomes just a series of requests and response objects, and then individual handlers for every single kind of request in my system. And we do the same thing on the right side as well. So if I want to like change customer address or approve invoice, that becomes a request. 
And then on the response side, sometimes it's just a like Boolean, like did it work or not? Or maybe there's validation errors, so validation errors come out the other side as well. So I'll have something like approve invoice. And there might be some kind of result on the way back out. <laughs> Both of these implement the same request interface. So they just request. One's request to write something, one's request to read something. And then the handlers as well, as well are the same I request handler of this request or that request. So the last little piece that, uh, that really helped us is once we started to have a lot of these different individual requests and handlers, the really great thing about this is instead of having this kind of one God interface in class that manages both of these, instead I have lots and lots and lots of little request handlers all over my system, and if I want to change anything in my system, it only affects that one little place and not the entire rest of my application. So it allows me to easily grow my application with more and more request handlers for things, and then if I want to change or delete or whatever, it's only affecting that one individual request handler and nothing else. So that's the basic pitch of a mediator to help implement the CQRS pattern. And it really is like the, so first I give a talk on this very subject and mediator is one of my favorite <laughs> libraries um, along with Automapper. And so I, I found that this pattern really helped me because it really is the application of like the single responsibility principle. One thing does its job really, really well. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I tried before, I, mis I misinterpreted OO to want to do a lot of reuse and things like right. that. And actually reuse is evil. You shouldn't want to reuse anything. Um, maybe base infrastructure pieces, like we want to reuse the database, of course, but otherwise, if I want to be able to change my system easily, I have to be worried about side effects. And so this kind of pattern minimizes the amount of side effects that a given change will have on the, uh, the application. Nice. Nice. Okay, so then is the size of your project rather large because you have so many different classes and handlers? Uh, it can get very large. Uh, we try not to get it too large, but for something like this, um, it can go, we, we have some projects that have hundreds of controller actions in, a, in an MVC application, which will be hundreds of requests and handlers to do individual work. Um, and so by keeping these separate, we can basically linearly grow that without having a lot of complexity uh, being introduced on us over time. So let's pretend that you're writing an API, right? Um, it does, how does this affect caching? Like, technically those are different objects, right? Yes. Um, at that point, you have, a, you have a couple different options. What a lot of people try to do is handle that as part of the mediator request. Um, there's one additional piece that mediator can do, which is basically attach additional behavior before or and or after uh, handling something. So what people uh, tend to do is put a caching in here uh, for writes. This is where they'll have validation and authorization. Can the user do this thing? Um, we'll just tack that on as additional kind of decorations uh, and behaviors outside of the, the kind of core request handler. Thank you so much for showing us this. Of it course. actually made it Thank quite you. a bit clearer. I hope so. <laughs> Don't forget to share this video on social media. And comment below to be entered into our weekly giveaway. Tell us what questions you have for our guests. See, See you, you next time. time.